Everyone is image conscious. There are whole industries around building your image online. It's everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, and the media. But for men, you don't need to chase any of that validation. Instead, the male aesthetic is innate. It's already within you. It's the foundation for almost all positive male energy, and your job is to bring it to light. In this video, we're going to go over the critical steps to achieving your innate male aesthetic. Now let's get into it. First, let's start with the lies. Yes, all the garbage that is on the internet or in the media. It's just an endless flow of junk that is not only confusing, but has a suspicious undertone of money and profit. Anything to hook you. The reality is getting the male aesthetic is very simple. Not easy, simple. Let's not kid ourselves. Anything worth doing is almost always going to be a challenge. If having a lean and muscular physique was easy, everyone would have it, and they don't. So let's talk about what not to do. First, do not count calories. It's such a tremendous relief not to stress over the amount of calories that we consume over a given period. It's such a brain drain to have to think about every little item you want to eat. Calories are, of course, relevant for all of us, but counting them is not. We have proof of men with tremendous aesthetics that have never counted a calorie in their life. How can they do that? Simple, and we'll address it a little bit later. But bulking and cutting is the modern yo-yo diet of today. People get so obsessed with eating 500 calories more a day or 500 calories less a day that they tend to lose focus on the bigger picture, end up quitting and going back to their bad habits. Yes, you need to eat enough food to develop your body, but the way of achieving it is not through ultra-detailed calorie counting. Rather, it's the actual food you consume, and nature takes care of the rest. The second lie is getting that V-taper, broad shoulders, or magnificent chest is all in the genetics. Garbage. Genetics play a role, but it is far from the deciding factor for anyone seeking an aesthetic male physique. Genetics is more icing on the cake. The professional athlete at the absolute pinnacle of his sport almost certainly has ideal genetics to help him get there. But we all have what is needed to bring out our most ideal aesthetics, and it's not complicated or reliant on Mother Nature. So what is it then? First, we need to build the baseline of our body with muscle. Second, we need to be lean enough to show it off. Simple, but not easy, but almost certainly possible and within the reach of all of us. So building a foundation of muscle, this is key. It is so fundamental to male aesthetics that it's without a doubt the priority over all other aspects. Aesthetics come from strength, strength from muscle. And that is why lifting weights is really the only exercise that aesthetics will require. Not cardio, weightlifting. This can be accomplished through the use of dumbbells, bands, or calisthenics. And importantly, can be done both at the gym or simply in your home. Specifically, what we need is resistance or calisthenics, progressive overload, a training routine that allows for rest and growth, and a flexible approach tailored to your specific needs. So with resistance training, not all exercises are created the same. There are only truly a handful that you really need to focus on. Nothing fancy or the latest fad, just simple and clean. And while you want to focus on your entire body, here are the areas that must be emphasized. Back and shoulders. For that V-taper look, the lat and deltoid muscles are crucial. For the back, the most important is pull-ups. The pull-up is so effective as it's a compound exercise that hits your biceps, forearms, and of course, the majority of your back for that V-taper. Make no mistake, pull-ups are hard, very hard. If you cannot do any pull-ups, then give yourself some help. Use a chair and put one foot on it to help you take some of the body weight off so you can achieve the full range of motion. Alternatively, you can use bands. Hook them overhead in the jam of a door and you have the ability to train your back anywhere you go. Remember to mimic the motion of a pull-up. Back straight, hands at least shoulder width apart, and full range of motion. If you do belong to a gym, you will obviously have access to all the equipment that you need, including lap pull-down machines and pull-up stations. At home, there are excellent pull-up hangers that fit in the opening of a doorway, or you can simply make a pull-up bar yourself with some pipe from the hardware store. Be sure to safely secure any device before adding your body weight. Second for the back is seated rows. This is best performed with dumbbells, but bands work great here too. Sit on the edge of a chair and put the weight between your feet and the chair. Bend at your waist until your belly or chest hits the top of your thighs. Pick up the weight and stay in that position leaning forward. As you pull the weight upward, focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together. The idea is to lift the weight with your back muscles primarily instead of your rear delts. It is a bonus that the rear delts are engaged, but that is a different exercise. 
Here, we are focusing on the back so the lifting is done with your lap muscles as you squeeze the shoulder blades together. You will find that being seated will allow you to do a good amount of weight as your lats are some of the biggest muscles on your body. For shoulders, the press is king. We've all seen this exercise done and it's almost mundane. And that's the point. It's not a fad. It's not for showing off. It's for building tremendous shoulder muscles. The shoulder muscle is the most visible for that wide look and is the starting point for the V taper. And the press is another exercise ideally suited for the chair. Sit with a straight back and a tight core. Put a set of dumbbells on your thighs and rest them there before lifting up. You can even give them a little kick to help you with the initial movement. Bring the weight straight overhead in a slow and deliberate motion. If possible, try to bring the weight down to the tops of your shoulders, but no higher than your ears. Equally important is the side and rear delts to complete the shoulder routine. Here, the basic movement is the fly or the raise. The mid delts are the most important as that is the muscle that gives you the most width. It is also one of the weaker muscles in your body. It's not as natural a movement as the overhead press or the pulling roll. So keep that in mind. You want to drop the weight quite a bit. Avoid any kipping with your body and don't overdo it. The right amount of weight is all that's needed. For the mid delts, bring the weight to the sides of your legs and perform a lateral raise to 90 degrees. Don't go any higher as that will only decrease the emphasis on the side delt. Keep the arms directly out to your side and try to avoid creeping them forward towards your stronger front deltoid muscles. Even dip your hands forward with your pointer finger facing somewhat downward to further emphasize the side delt. The rear deltoid fly is very similar to the seated row. You want to be in the same seated position, but instead of lifting with your lats and squeezing your shoulder blades, you want a fly movement to emphasize the rear shoulders. Lifting your elbows out of the way away from your body to focus on the shoulder instead of the back. Similarly, the rear delts are a weaker muscle than the lat, so you want to lower the weight comparatively. The next area of emphasis is the chest. And again, it's the most simple and basic exercise that is the most effective. And we can do them anywhere and everywhere. It's the push-up. But the tip for the best aesthetics is to emphasize the upper chest to bring out the most visually appealing chest that emphasizes that V taper and shoulder. So for the upper chest, we're looking at the decline push-up or the incline bench if you have the weight bench or you can use one at the gym. The decline push-up is very simple. Just put your feet up on a chair and lift the feet up so your body is parallel to the floor or perhaps with a slight decline. This focuses on the muscles at the top part of the chest with a compound effect on the front delts as well. Keep your body as straight as possible and go downward until your chest is about an inch from the floor. Be sure to be slow and deliberate with a full range of motion top to bottom. If you have wrist issues, try using some push-up bars or even some dumbbells. This will change your grip and put much less pressure directly onto the wrist. The next critical exercise is legs. Never skip leg day. While we've been emphasizing the aesthetic of the V taper, the actual look you want is more of an X shape with the V taper at the top. Having skinny legs with a muscular body not only destroys the ideal aesthetic, but leg development is critical for testosterone and growth hormone and athletic strength. The undisputed king here is the squat. One very effective training approach without the need for weights is the jump squat. Keep your feet shoulder width apart without any weights. Squat down until you're about parallel with the floor and raise back up. As with all exercise, keep your core tight and your back straight. The plyometric part of this exercise is to leap off the floor when you reach the top of the movement. This is an advanced move, so if you are new to squats, leave the jump out. But once you're hitting your rep count, incorporate a plyometric jump to help fully develop all the key muscles of the leg and prepare you for athletic movement as well. So while the squat does develop your hamstrings, the glute lift is a great addition for the development of the back of your legs. Simply lie on the floor on your back. Bring your feet inward until your knees are bent comfortably. Keep your feet flat on the floor and your arms flat by your sides. Then lift your pelvis toward the sky such that your core is straight from your chest to your knees. This is a terrific body weight exercise and really focuses on the hamstrings as well as the glutes. And don't forget the calves. This is an often overlooked area, but is key for aesthetics as well as movement and balance. Keep this simple again with basic calf raises. Stand straight, add some dumbbells, weight, or exercise bands. With your feet flat on the floor, rise up to the tiptoe position. Perform the motion slow and deliberate. Variations include moving your feet inward such that your toes are facing each other, and then moving the feet outward where the heels are closer together than the toes. Finally is the core. For aesthetics, 
Having six pack abs is a key component that almost everybody desires, but working out the core is not the key to having a great look. It's mostly diet. So for core exercises, choose what you prefer for the abs, sit-ups, crunches, or lifts. One tip is to choose the ab exercise that you like the least. That's right, the one that you really don't want to do. The reason is that it's probably an area that's in desperate need of development, and when you successfully work out that area, you have an added bonus of increased confidence and sense of accomplishment. Also, don't forget the back of your core. You need to work 360 degrees of your core, including your obliques. So for the back of your core, do Superman raises. Lie on your stomach and raise your arms and legs towards the sky as much as you can. Hold the position and rest back down. You should feel this in your middle back, glutes, and rear shoulders. Now, none of these workouts are worth your time if you don't have the right attitude, progression, and schedule. Do not focus on working out perfectly. That is never going to be the most impactful part of developing an aesthetic physique. No, what matters most is, what are you going to do right at this moment? And how exactly are you going to improve on it? You must have the discipline. Just show up. If you're not in the mood to work out, tell yourself you'll just do it for five minutes. If you still can't quite get enough done, then stop. But you still have made the effort and you'll improve the next time but you'll likely find that you'll continue on past that five minute mark once you've started. Simply do the best you can and leave any other thoughts out of it. And for the progression component, your goal is eight reps. That's it. And it's not a hard number, but studies have shown that it's the ideal for muscle development. But the key is intensity. Reps five and six should be getting hard and number eight will be a challenge to complete with proper form. Once that becomes easier, then you either increase the weight or add a variation to the move to make it more challenging. Challenging at five to six reps and almost coming to failure at rep eight. And then do this for three sets of eight reps. Equally important is not training. Rest is the hidden ingredient for muscle development. The basic rule is don't train the same muscles within 48 hours. Many even suggest that training should not be done more than once a week. The point is to find your balance. Find what works for you and that is the most important. Pay no mind to what others are doing, how much weight they lift, or how often they lift. The key is showing up and developing the base muscle that will lead you to the aesthetic physique you're after. Finally, you need to be lean. Lean enough to have those muscles show. Here's another bit of great news. There's no perfect ideal diet that you need to do for your ideal aesthetic. The real key to showing off muscles is removing food rather than eating a specific way or counting calories. As we mentioned at the top, There is simply no need to count calories to get your body in the shape to show off those hard-earned muscles. Rather, there are two key tips. First, eliminate junk food. And second, add protein. That's it. Do not overcomplicate things, especially when the most important part of achieving the aesthetics you want is discipline and action. Do not let obsession over diet get in the way. You can always fine-tune your own diet based on the results you're getting. But as many have said, You can't out-train a terrible diet. Get rid of the sugary junk food that's not doing you any favors and add in some high-quality protein. Give your body what it really wants to perform and watch that body develop into the aesthetic physique that you're after. Check out this video for more details on the animal-based diet that is giving many people incredible results. And we'll see you in the next one.